Oh, I'm ready to play. We're going to see where they start. More than likely going to be Smashville. Um, very neutral stage, and that is indeed what they agreed to. Maybe that should be the, I guess, like the, the sponsorship stage of the Zandu Championship Series, Smashville. Yeah, Smashville, yeah. I mean, it's so our many, mascot. <laughs> so many great sets start here, and so many great sets end here. But let's see how this one turns out. Game one, Dingus Joe versus Dexter. And you, both of those players did not want to make a commitment early on because of things like this. Dexter got one opening, and it was a quick 43%. Now Dingus Joe getting his 23 not the end of the world, but good damage nonetheless. And that's just what's so scary uh, about play of this level. One hit is going to lead to so much that you really do not want to give that initial opening. Mm -hmm. Dingus Joe doing a good job just slowing down a bit more. Even though he does have a deficit, there's 5 minutes and 30 seconds on the clock. you got plenty of time to make something happen. No need to rush in. Definitely. Even though he is going out the up smash a bit early. No edge guard attempt. I'm going to opt for stage control. Use that neutral B just a bit. And the up air, great anti air. Not getting the second hit, which is the more damaging part of the up air, but it still got the damage. And he managed to take the lead, even if it was only for a moment. Yeah, but Dexter answered back immediately. Slow dancing blade. Had to hit confirm that, but finds that it wasn't there. Just backing off, not overcommitting. And then Dink is just immediately teching straight up and then saying, hey, down smash, maybe? Dexter, though, has that, that play style where he's not really going to run into too many things. You're going to have to really force a hit on him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dexter's one of those few players. I always say that when you play him, if he hits you, you feel dumb because he'll just stand there, stare at you, and forward smash you. Like an optimal punish for making you reach. He's one of those guys, yeah, you can't overcommit on. Keeps jumping up. I wonder, from the ledge, I wonder if uh, Dengue Joe is going to catch onto that, maybe have an answer at some point. Mm. Oh, almost has the air dodge read, and Dingus Joe, he's looking for that grab. You know what that means. Whenever he goes for that, that means the two toots on the table, and it will likely kill. Dexter, you know, he's just playing that kind of anti-grab range, and he grabs his, gets a grab of his own. The up throw, not going to do it quite yet. Hopefully he didn't sell it, because now he might actually need to wait a couple more percent to get this up throw to kill. Even if it's sailed, yeah, it still will be enough if he pummels or two. So just like that, Dexter drawing first blood, but still very patient, very, like, Composed playing coming through from Dingus Joe, and I, I think, think he's, he's dead. On. Yeah, that's it. Dingus answering back, and yeah, that will be the great equalizer. That dash attack. You know, I was mentioning earlier that uh, I wonder if Dingus Joe is going to catch on to the fact that Dexter keeps jumping from the ledge, and uh, maybe he did. That dash attack did manage to take it. Good stuff right there. And I wonder how Dexter feels. <laughs> he's like, wow, I really just lost my stock because I jumped. Yeah, I was at like 80. I had so much room to play. Well, he's trying to make it up again. Quick 65% was put on the Dengage Joe. I think it's only retaliating with 18%, unfortunately, for him. Yeah, he needs to get a grab going soon. I think he knows that. And I think Dexter knows that, which is why he's just spacing backwards with four airs and whatnot. And that's um, essentially how you kind of defeat Gaming Watch. If you have a, a range attack, if you have a large disjoint, you just kind of retreat and let Gaming Watch come into you. Because he, he doesn't have the range, he doesn't have the speed. And that's one of the things that might hold him back a bit as a oh, character. not like that. If that was a nine. That would have been incredible. Yeah, but... We'd be talking about a, another equalizer. Speaking of equalizer, that up smash, going to eat one hit, going to connect. And all of a sudden, Dexter now is put on notice. You know, he can't really take too many more of those. Is this going to be enough? No. And that shows that he's too high for that now. That win condition's off the table. Dingus Joe has to make a hard read happen. And he's looking for that with that up smash. But Dexter, spacing that four air so well. It's coming through, giving that safe control back. Dexter perfectly content with just taking his time and just dissecting this game plan by Dengage Joe apart. Just casually backing up and saying, hey, I only need one hit or no hits. As long as I have the stage behind me, I am comfortable. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that read attempt by Dengage Joe jumping up with an up air, almost connecting with the second hit, but not like that. The one time he overcommits in that last minute and a half will be the thing that undoes him for the first game. Dexter going up. And uh, that was actually two crab kills for the entire set, mm -hmm. which in some ways that means Dengage Joe was doing a lot right because Marth obviously um, can kill you with a forge smash, a dancing blade, a shield breaker, several options, even F tilt at certain percents. Um, but none of those are actually what did Dengage Joe in. It was that final grab, you know, and at the same time, very smart stuff by Dexter of being aware of that. Like, hey, I'm not able to really get that, that major strong hit, but I can get this small grab here and there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 10, 15 straight hits later, Dengage Joe is in kill range. Going to run it right back to Smashville. Oh, no, he burns jump again. But that time, he wasn't at a higher percent. So Dengage might have shown his hand a little bit too early. I like the first dash attack because it got him a stock. But this one, it showed that he was hip to it, but he didn't get too much 
off of it. Yeah. Maybe keep an eye on your pocket later might be better. He's still actually jumping from the ledge, though, so clearly Dexter <laughs> hasn't gotten the memo. Yeah. I want to stop doing that, champ. Yeah. I, I think Dengis Joe just wanted the damage. And that movement by Dengis was great right there. A couple Fox Trots, and all of a sudden he's opening Dexter up 81%. I think really the first major lead he's had, even though it's by a bit. Tries to go for the jab grab. Dexter just completely aware of the scenario and rolls right out of it. And these are the kind of leads that you really want because now you have that rage and now you can still uh, get the grab confirmed into the up air. And yeah, he's starting to look forward again. Now the window might be closed. They're both at a higher percent, but still, you're in a much better position to get it. If you're around here and just like that, at the end of that window, Dings Joe manages to slide his way just through. I guess being 2D helps, but still, drawing first blood. And that's just such a good thing for your confidence. Someone that has won the last three times you both have met, and now you have a stock lead on them, it lets you know, hey, I'm here to play. I can beat him. This is my chance. But Dexter just so relentless. Is it going to be another edge guard attempt? Goes for the trump. Gives up stage control. And uh, doesn't really get anything for it, unfortunately, for him. Yeah, but Dingus Joe didn't capitalize on too much. I don't think up throw will kill just yet. Dexter knew that, so he's just like, all right, let me get this positioning. Maybe something else after. And he wanted a trump into roll, I think, but unfortunate misinput. Dengis just playing with that small bit of space that he had so well, and all of a sudden just switches sides. And I think maybe Dexter should adopt um, stage control a bit more into his game plan against Dengis. Get, get Dengis Joe to get all the way to the ledge where he has no options to dance around these large hitboxes and try to just kind of abuse that. Yeah, but so far, look at that. He's just checked down. Dexter's feet are planted right now. He's not giving up anything for free. And if you try to get a little bit too frisky, you're going off the top, buddy. And that's now been three stocks, by the way. Dexter <laughs> has actually not gotten a kill any other way than a Z-button. That's so bizarre, too. De or Marth has so much kill power that you'd expect a light hit for a game watch to just get blown up by it sometimes. But Dingus Joe is playing so impeccably around the tipper that when he just doesn't have any other opportunities. Just chucking him is the best way. Right now, I mean, you're definitely correct. <laughs> and right now, it's like Dexter is slowly but surely just clawing his way right back into this game. Um, I, I was wondering how we were going to see Dexter approach from a deficit, because generally it's been Dengis Joe having to kind of make the approach. He's been the one that's down. When the roles were reversed, it did not slow Dexter down by any means. 59 to 47. He was even at one point. Oh, I thought we were going to see a punish right there. Um, f tilt by Gaming Watch, 100% not safe, especially not on the power shield. Oh, no, yeah. That move has a lot of minus frames on that. But Dingus Joe, look at this. He's playing so patiently right now. That call out was immaculate. The up smash sending another statement. And if you wanted to hear that statement again, here it is. Two up smashes in a row will start to build up a big lead on the side of Dingus Joe. And the Woo! third one, that's the key, champ. That's the key. The up smash three times in a row will be the thing that gives Dingus Joe that game. And that final one was actually because um, Dexter did jump from the ledge. He tried to do a jump nair and... Clearly, Dengis Joe is starting to catch on a bit. Um, Dexter's still not getting that memo, but it's only 1-1. One, one. It's the best of five. He has plenty of time mm -hmm. to make those adjustments. Yeah, and now we see the Lucina pick come out. And I was talking to him a little bit um, about, you know, oh, when you go Marth and when you go Lucina, like maybe a couple minutes ago. He was like, I go Lucina on, um, like, the medium weight to lightweight flow to your characters, too, because Lucina's Dancing Blade works a little bit easier on her or on those characters, and plus, like, it's hard to pick and choose your spacing on some or some people. So there's a player component and a character component too. And so far, it looks like that adds up to Lucina. And it makes a lot of sense against Dengis, who is dashing around so much that it is very difficult to, to hit him in general, let alone hit him with just the tipper. Mm -hmm. And right now, the Lucina pick's definitely been paying off. 55 to 6%, quite the lead that he is uh, getting on Dengis Joe this time around. I wonder if Dengis, in his mind, though, is has switched up his play style. He's like, it's a different character. I need to do something different. When at the core of it, Lucina and Marth do have the same play style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, like, it's 98% similar, but, like, different options. So you just have to respect a couple things a little bit more, respect a few other things a little bit less. And then once you get that equation down, you, yeah, don't have to change around too much. One of the things you do have to respect more is that forward smash. Especially on Smashville. If, yeah, if Dexter had pulled the trigger on the 4 Smash right there, that would have been absolutely And it curtains. looked like he knew, though, um, because he actually went for a fake Trump backed up, and then he punched the roll accordingly. He just did it with a grab instead of a forward Smash. Mm -hmm. 
and again, he knew. Dexter knows so much, but he's not uh, punishing it as hard as like he could. But he's punishing it as hard as he wants to, if that makes sense. That's definitely true. Which maybe that's because he does know it's one one. He does not want to be down against Thinga Show. Um, we we'll have to uh, maybe ask him that after this set. Oh, the counter grab. Uh, that up air sends him so high in the air, but not um, out of percent to get a you know confirm off the grab anymore. So again, Dingus Show has to show that he's willing to play out the neutral and get his kill nice and honest. It's just so much harder now that the grab is no longer on the table. He's throwing out these up smashes, trying to essentially take the stock the same way he did last game, but Dexter's no longer jumping. He's no longer throwing out those attacks. Maybe that's why he's going for more grabs and less of those attacks, because so many of them have been beat out by an up smash already. Mm -hmm. And again, how many stops is that by grab? That's at least like four, four. right? At least four. Yeah. <laughs> so four of five stocks. <laughs> this guy. So I mean, he, he should be an old army. Yeah. Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just keep on throwing them off the... Oh, my God. Yeah, that force smash probably would have killed. He had a nice bit of charge on that, too. And now this is starting to run away from Dingus Show. Not just run, like bolt away, but... Speaking of, of run, run he yeah. completely ran into that forehead. That noggin was out there. He looked like a magnet. He's like, I must go. Mm -hmm. My people need me. <laughs> 91 to 3%, though. It's going to be so difficult for Dingus Show to bring this back. Now at 108, now put off stage as well. We have seen miracles, and he has a nine hammer, but is he going to be able to really get another hit on Dexter? Dexter just playing so well, so evasive right now. His keep out game is phenomenal. Yes, and Dexter, he knew that the air dodge was going to happen. That air dodge was given to him so many times. He was only taking grabs. And Dingus Joe, he's probably like, all right, I'll take a grab in these scenarios. I don't die off of it. But that time, that time, you, you can't hold that LRR button there. You just have to jump out or something like that. But hindsight's 2020, you know? Yep. Dingus Joe likely won't fall to that position again, but Dexter already got his reward off of it, and he's going up 2 1 right now. On to final destination. Dingus Joe, I'm surprised he likes this stage because uh, generally you wouldn't expect the game a lot to choose it. However, he plays it so well. Um, I've seen him counterpick this stage so many times. Maybe he wants actually more space to move around, to try to play around the large sword, large hitboxes of. Lucina. And that's really the general plan. Like, when there's no platforms, there's no real escape when you have an invincible attack coming out from under you. And that's what uh, Dingus Joe really looks for. When he's winning on the stage, he wins even harder. When he's losing, the same thing happens to him. So he's gambling on his neutral ability and his ability to set up for his own win conditions rather than, you know, playing around Dexter. Oh, and that was a nine, but that time there was enough time to air dodge through. Yeah, I thought we were actually going to see an up there right there. Clearly, though, Dingus Joe knows the percent better than me, but that's what I thought we were going to see. And at 100%, I'm pretty confident Dexter's stock would have been gone, but maybe it wouldn't have connected. Yeah, it's one of those weird things where that up air, because there's so many just win boxes and DI to account for, there's a lot of moving parts. Kind of halfway gave the roll to Dexter, who was looking for it, but then he air dodged at the end. Oh, uh, a grab. That forward throw, sending him far off stage. Dexter not able to get much off of these ledge scenarios, though. Especially when he goes for the Trump. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, he went too high up to get anything else off that. And um, generally, we actually see both these players going off stage for edge guards. Neither of them wants to do it. Both of them are valuing stage control so much more than we're used to seeing them do. Nice check on that uh, run pass attempt there. Keeping Dexter honest. And again, yeah, not air dodging right there. It's just jumping out. Yeah, he learned his lesson last time. He said, all right, man, everybody gets one. Yeah. So many obstacles for Dexter to get around, but he still managed to do it at the end of the day. You see him go off stage just for a second. Oh, now Dexter's starting to look for that grab. Oh, and he doesn't turn around fast enough. But nice punish right there, and that was actually enough to get the kill. Dingus Joe shaking his head. The DI might not have been there. Talk about a reversal. Hey, I got you off stage. I just hit you. What are you going to do? I'm actually going to take your stock with it well placed up there. Mm -hmm. and now the extra credit has begun. Quick 20% put on the Dengus Joe. Slow and steady is winning the race at this moment. 152 to 28. And Dengus just trying to find this last hit. But Dexter. He's trying to force it. Yeah, Dexter's not having any of that. He's just ready to hold his shield, angle it if he needs to, and just keep on keeping on. Woo, that forward air was so good right there. I'm um, barely just kind of going over Dexter. It, it, essentially, 
out mic out footseat him, which is very difficult to do with a credit card. Yeah, I mean, Dexter was starting to really down tilt a lot more. Uh, so counting on that, just throwing out that forward air and then falling into him. So the hitbox is still strong enough to take the stock. Great awareness by Dingus Joe. He's still awake. He's still trying to claw his way back into it. But Dexter's making it so difficult for him. Maybe he get another nine hammer like he did earlier, but it actually hit this time. Who knows? Good answer right there. Just fire, fighting his way back down to the ground. Something Dexter wasn't quite prepared for. Another ledge trump and another ledge trump not getting anything except the lost stage control. That could have been way worse for Dexter. He has to be thanking someone in the sky right now. Yeah, that was so close. If Dinkus would have punished that air dodge, just wow. We'd be like, we're talking about a game five right now. Mm -hmm. Instead, we are still talking about Dinkus Joe trying to make this comeback. 46 to 105, so difficult. Now 55, though. If he can just get a couple more straight hits, maybe three to four, and up smash could take the stock, but he has to do it before Dexter gets him into kill grab range because that will essentially be five of six stocks gone to a grab. All right, you need something here. What do you got, Dingus? Okay, I like that. I like what I'm seeing, but a little bit too much right there, and the grab won't do it just yet, but that's just a sign that you can't take another one of those. Tech chase. Not getting anything off of it. Just I hope we still. don't see a dash attack from Dingus because that has been shield grabbed time and time again by Dexter. It's so tense. This next hit means so much to both of these players. Not That's able to shield. get the grab. Still chasing down. Dash attack. That was a mistake. Is that going to be it? No, he manages to get out. Dexter's still alive for the moment. Dingus still Whoa. fighting. Where air dodge and the dash attack comes in still at the end of the day. Dexter going to take it. Wow, with a 3-1 victory. Yeah, and that was so close each time. I like how uh, Dingus Joe set up for so many 50-50s off the up air. He had the grab. He had so many things right, but at the end, it was just Dexter. He, his win condition required less 